Okay, welcome everyone. Hope you all can hear me. Okay, great. Let's get started tonight. 6.30, it's time to go. Um, and it should be a fast one tonight. Our um, presenters tonight are Marcy Burns doing data entry and also how um, students can do data, data entry. And then teacher presenters are Marcy, Anne, and June. And I have a few, uh, a quick outline and some announcements. The first one is we have a fall status report and that opens November 1st and is due by November 30th. This is a very quick survey. It's usually, I think it's like five or six questions and it can be answered pretty quickly. Um, and the next second payment conveniently goes to payroll on December 1st and we send out by the 15th, assuming all things go according to plan. Um, so yes, make sure you guys complete that status report. Um, I prefer not to have to harass you to do it. So if you could do it by the 30th, that'd be fantastic. And I will send out reminders. But um, yeah, so November 1st through the 30th, this is fall status report, because somehow it is almost November. Um, then I want to remind you also, Adobe Connect can be used um, by your students or by you. Just make an appointment, feel free to use it. Next up, discussion boards and blogs. Um, I want to remind you of discussion boards. I have linked our SCR discussions um, in the web links. And um, we have discussions on there about the IOPs and about the, um, okay, this makes me laugh because I'm a huge Cardinals fan, which kind of, you know, play against the Mets sometimes, so yeah. Um, but, oh, the IOPs. Yeah, so IOPs coming up are um, October is the, still the CLC, Phenology and Climate. And Jessica, who's actually on here too, and I um, went out last week and did our, our land cover site. And then November, Phenology and Climate carries on. Um, our tree actually lost its last week, our last leaf, I think it was today or yesterday. It was pretty sad because we got very emotionally attached to our tree and um, when I started losing all those leaves, it was, it was sad for us. Okay. Um, then next week, or sorry, in two weeks, oh, I need a date on here. Um, the next webinar is on November 7th, 4.30 p.m. And our career speaker is Bill Berkey. Tim, I will send out a link to it. It's going to be a pull daddy survey, just like the other surveys have been, and I will send out the link. And I will send it out on November 1st. And um, teacher presenter Cheryl Turpin, I don't think she's here tonight, send her a reminder out um, soon. Um, okay, Carol, that works. So again, fall status report starting November 1st. Okay, any questions about those things? And the date there is wrong. November 7th is the next webinar. Okay, well then I'm going to put Marcy on. Okay, Marcy, you are up. Okay. Um, can, am I being heard? Oh, very good. Um, what I'm sharing with you tonight is a little bit about um, entering GLOBE data and how Julie wanted me to convince you how easy it really is with students. And it really is. Um, I have fifth graders and they really get into it. It's sort of the final piece to the science data collecting is to sharing it with others. So I think it's very important. Um, and the kids really love doing it. Um, so on the New Globe website, you can uh, establish one of a student account. And I did that by going to uh, my profile page and it listed my school and also the L2R, which I didn't create a site account on there, but with my students 
um, they now have account that they use to log in. Then the students can enter the email address and the password just like you do when you log into the GLOBE website. And the students only have to click on the enter data, which is a lot easier than the previous website. Then students need to go and find what protocol you collected data for. I circle here digital thermometer measurements. That would be our um, six-day uh, thermometer in the instrument shelter. And then it takes them right to the login page. Uh, the big things that the kids make errors on if they make an error is that they forget to <clears throat> excuse me use universal time um, or they don't use the pull down menu for the correct study site um, and or they'll use the date they're logging the data not necessarily the date the data was collected so those are the three things that the globe website won't notice that are incorrect um, when you submit your data but uh, that's what I really emphasize with the kids um, and then if they submit everything correctly they get their two smileys and that seems to be the exciting thing for them <laughs> um, what I do to teach my kids how to log data is we practice so since the beginning of the year we've been practicing collecting cloud data and um, surface temperature data. So I take them to the training site, which is right there on the top of the login choice page. And it takes you to the old website. And you have to sign in again. And um, I had to sign in. The students had to sign in using the old globe login, which was bunch of letters and then an S Globe 2 password. Um, so I'm not sure if that'll get changed, but we needed that old thing to log in. And then you click on wherever you want to do, and you'll come up with the practice pages. Um, and it's really easy for the kids to practice. I have a school with 60 laptop computers, so we'll get a card of 15 and the kids work in pairs to log their data. Um, one reads the data and the other one logs it in and then they double check each other's work. And that works really well into practice. Um, when we actually start collecting our surface temperature data for Dr. Zukowski um, in December, ideally the kids will go out collect their data and then they'll come back in and sit down at the computer and log it right away. I um, kept a really old desktop computer in my classroom that still works. Uh, so the tech department is really gracious about keeping that running so the kids can log every day. Um, but we do get behind. And so if when we do get behind, I pull kids out of the bus room in the morning or the afternoon. Um, and or if we really get behind, I'll go to the laptop cart and in 15 minutes we can catch up on all the data we need to log in. And entering GLOBE data is really easy for students to do. They just, it just takes a lot of practice and double checking their work. And most of my students have always taken it very seriously. Um, and they always celebrate just a little when they get their two smileys. Um, and the one thing that has always been helpful for me is the help desk for GLOBE and those folks down in Texas are very helpful if you ever need anything. Um, the sign in for the students is if you establish a student login account, um, if you go on your um, profile page, you can set up a login account for your students and it'll come up as students of and then your name. Uh, the data that's already been entered, um, that's, I think that's a little more tricky on the new website. Um, 
you got to click on a lot more things. But you can go to, I believe it's, there's a tab across the top on science projects, I believe, and it will actually say uh, finding globe data, and it will uh, walk you through the steps for that. Okay, any other questions? How far back can you enter data? Um, can you be more specific on that question? <clears throat> So, Julie, can you log old data then? I mean, from several years ago? Oh. Hey, Erin, question. Um, email the help desk. Although Chris had the same problem, um, for some reason I can do it on my Mac, but my coworker had the same problem on her PC. We're not sure what it is, but Chris did have a fix for it. Jermaine, three to four weeks is no problem. Yeah, you, can, you can enter years back. Oh, yeah, and sometimes we'll go three or four weeks and we just have a marathon logging session. Um, my students are not currently entering data. Well, they are, I guess. The um, temperature, the daily temperature from the instrument shelter, um, they're currently logging. But we um, will start logging surface temperature and cloud data in December as part of the field, uh, surface temperature field campaign. It, one thing you do have to be careful, the kids have to be very serious about entering their data at first, but they'll get used to it. <laughs> they like hearing you guys too down there in Texas. Hey, Twyla, there's a workshop page on globe.gov, and I will get the link right now. Um, if they can't find a workshop on there, they should email the help desk, help at globe.gov. We're going to get that workshop page, though. I did sew that quilt. <laughs> Okay, so there's a workshop page. We're actually having one in Colorado um, November 10th. If you know anybody interested, let them know that we're holding one in Colorado. And then here's the, oh, and the email address is on Marcy's slide. I'll put it here too. Um, yeah, my students are continuing work from last school year. Um, and ironically enough, after this part of the webinar is over, you'll hear more about that in the other part of the webinar. Yes, Marcy is being very generous with time tonight. Thank you, Marcy. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so I'm going to put Anne and June on for the teacher presentation part.
Okay, so you are all up, and you can all do webcams at the same time if you want to. Okay. <laughs> can you hear June? <laughs> I'm here. Okay, we can see all three of you. Oh, Anna can't hear you yet. Oh, there's Anna. Okay. You can't. Can you hear me now? Okay, there you go. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Sounds good to me. I think we're all okay. up. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Marcy, are you going first? So I'm first, right? Yep. Okay. So we're just going to summarize and give you an update of our learning to research project with our separate schools. Um, my school is Main Street School, and I have 56 GLOBE students this year. And um, we're investigating local indicators of a changing climate on our school grounds, Norwalk Creek and Lake Erie. And one of the extra components this year is we're really close to um, one of the research uh, stations for NASA at Plum Brook, and they test lots of things in their giant vacuum chamber. And there, we're having a connection this year with NASA. And between the 8th grade classes and 5th grade classes and NASA, the, we're working together. And t kids will have to pass these um, um, different skills and content areas. And then they'll get rocket parts when they pass the different places, the different topics. And then in May, we're going to go to Plum Brook and launch rockets with astronauts. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, what our school stu GLOBE students have learned so far is the difference between weather and climate. Well, we're working on that anyway. Uh, climate classifications of not only our school, but also all of your schools. And um, we're continuing to practice our GLOBE protocols for clouds. GPS, hydrology, air temperature, and surface temperature. We're ramping up for the surface temperature field campaign in December. And we're using technology this year, uh, one, to enter data into the GLOBE database. Um, we're also finding historical climate data, such as our storm events that we'll be looking closely at. And um, the kids are taking lots of photos and video and learning what other GLOBE students are doing by way of Skype. And I think it might be beneficial um, to use Adobe Connect. <laughs> Ann and I Skyped the other day, and it, the connection was it real was. sketchy. So maybe we should try that <laughs> um, next time. And yeah. And so one of the earlier questions was, and will we continue our project from last year? And um, yes, we are. Uh, one of our. Um, questions for further study last year was um, with the additional precipitation that we've received over the last 50 years, um, does that account for more big major storm events? And how the storm events affect the water quality in our this creek that runs through our city? So we're going to be looking at that and also how Lake Erie really affects our climate. And so before the snow flies, which might be this weekend, um, we're going to visit with staff at the Old Woman Creek National Estuary Research Reserve, which is about 12 miles north of us, right on um, Lake Erie. And so then they'll get to know really what their water quality data really means, what are the nitrates and the pH and the conductivity really mean. Um, We'll return to the creek for more data, hopefully. And <clears throat> one of the kids had an idea if we would test the water in the reservoir, in the creek, and then at the, uh, the far end of the creek before it dumps into the river. And um, so that would be a good idea, too. Um, and then because we're right by Lake Erie, we enjoy a really extended fall season because of the warmth from the lake affects our climate.
I think it's my turn. So um, this is my class, my seventh and eighth graders from Surrey Village Charter School in um, Keene, New Hampshire. We go on an all-school hike every fall, and this is my group um, towards the end of the all-school hike. Um, what we have done so far um, is we have looked at some water quality data that has been collected by the Ishwilat River Local Advisory Committee. Um, and we actually had the chairperson of the committee came in and talked to my students today to tell them about what they do and um, what kinds of equipment they use to test water quality and the kinds of protocols that they follow. Um, we've um, from looking at that data, identified some possible questions for investigation, um, begun to look at the weather to climate activities and the um, climate classifications, um, and we've actually examined the contents of a leaf pack for macroinvertebrates, and we're really excited to find um, plenty of mayflies and a couple of caddisflies along with our um, sort of low-quality snails. Um, we have some Keene State College students who have been who are working with us. Um, they are our geography majors working on a um, capstone project, and so they're going to help us um, link our data that we collect to um, Google Earth um, and create some tours. So they came in and taught us how to use GPS devices. And we had a couple of members of um, the New Hampshire Fish and Game come show us how they do fish surveying, their shocking equipment. Um, and we found some chain pickerel, um, a lot of sunfish, and a couple of largemouth bass. And our next next steps are water sampling and point creation for our map um, to learn and practice the GLOBE protocols, um, document some signs of extreme weather because we're looking at um, whether extreme weather events have an effect on the water quality in our river, um, narrowing some questions for investigation, identifying historical data sets, and we will be um, hatching brook trout for release in a tributary of the Ishwilat River this spring. All right, my turn. Upper Woods Middle School, just north of Detroit. And our kickoff event this year was a, uh, a sailing adventure out on uh, Saginaw Bay of Lake Huron. And let me see if I can get my Michigan map ready for you. Here, is that the right direction? Saginaw Bay, right in this area here. And on an 80 foot, 84 foot, three masted schooner. Um, had my uh, students, I used my Future Think class, which is 30 students who applied in sixth grade to be involved in extensive science and go on a number of field excursions. So this is the first one that we went on. It's called the Appledorn um, Schooner, and I'm trying to remember the exact name of that particular vessel, but it's a repurposed vessel. They have two of them that uh, spend time on Saginaw Bay that go and do the uh, Mackinac race and also come down to the Detroit River. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Beautiful day to be out on the water. A little chilly, as you can see, but a lot of activities for my students, uh, knot tying and sucky disc and uh, uh, you know, ecological studies as well. Oh, you did. OK, Chris, good. So um, yeah, it was a great day. And um, we participated in the annual beach cleanup, the um, International Beach Cleanup Day. And again, sort of acclimating my students at the start of the year. It's on a Saturday. And um, always a very good event. Um, we just re uh, got our weather station installed, so we'll be ramping that up coming up soon. And um, something happened to my dendrology word over there. It kind of moved over. But uh, yesterday, spent the full day with my students doing some really exciting stuff on the Ethel Ford estate, the grounds. It's an 86-acre estate that's on Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair is a uh, delta lake that connects uh, Lake Huron at the north uh, down to the Detroit River and Lake Erie to the south and on to Marcy's place. And um, I find that 
the first part of my year is best spent acclimating my students to the outdoors. I teach students who come from an urban setting, and it is amazing how um, fearful, in a lot of ways, my students are, um, how hesitant, at least, that they are when they are outside of their home environment. And so I spend a good first two or three months um, having them connect with nature. And uh, they had a blast yesterday. It was, uh, it was, it had promised rain, but it didn't rain. And um, just the sights and smells. And uh, as you can see in the picture, the gentleman that's using his iPad to show one of our students, um, one of the, the president of the local Audubon Society with, was with us. Uh, the owner of the Wild Birds Unlimited store uh, came, and she and her son, uh, co-owners of that shop, were hosting my students on a bird walk, brought some uh, serious equipment you can see in the upper uh, left over there. And my kids were just really into it and loved it. So that's a big part of what I do to start off with is, is kind of getting them um, uh, into the great outdoors. Uh, our next steps are to begin the global protocols. And then we will be partnering with the University of Michigan on their species program, which is students predicting the effects of climate and ecological systems um, because we are sort of bounded by uh, big buildings. We don't have a lot of uh, nature around us. Um, we're going to use online tutorials and modeling software and the guided reading available there. And, um, and then we'll launch from that into um, their research on species locally. That's what we have in store. <laughs> <laughs> With leaf packs, I actually last year had my students select leaves and we put them in those old onion bags and we went out and sort of seeded the area off of the Etzel Ford Estate and weighed them down by rocks, and then we pulled them up three weeks later, and that just added a neat um, fact. Yeah, I wasn't to sure that our leaf packs would actually um, get anything, um, and so I was, was like just as excited as the kids were when idea. we started finding all these different macroinvertebrates. It was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was prepared yeah, for nothing. Just a kick um, earlier this week, and I was surprised. I by really didn't think they would get anything. We did. We put two leaf packs in. Um, we lost one to a ver cleanup, um, but I rescued the second one before they could throw that one away too. <laughs> And Bob, I do a boat trip every year that I can find the funds. It's almost $1,000 to get the kids out on that boat. So, um, so far, I'm two for two. <laughs> Sounds fun, Jen. Can I come? Alaska, well, you need ice picks. Okay, any other questions on there? I just wanted to say two things to wrap up. Um, first off, we can stay here for a little bit longer if you want to ask questions. But, um, or just keep talking. But the leaf packs, like I said in the email, I suggested to the Hydrology Refresh Committee, um, the Science Refresh. But if you have any other suggestions at all about protocols like the C added to GLOBE or protocol changes you recommend, please let me know. You guys do these more often than I do, so I'd love to have feedback from you. I can't remember the other thing I had to tell you. Okay. So this is one thing, so never mind the two parts. <laughs> okay, 
I'm going to take off you guys as presenters. And again, feel free to stick around and ask questions, though, or just continue talking. Thank you. Bob, is that as far as visualization or what part of ideology data? Oh, getting to it. Um, hydrology data you can get to through training.globe.gov still. I'll put that here. Through the visualization there. And I don't remember the timeline they have for hydrology. Um, Jessica, do you remember what it is? Yeah, I, I think by the original timeline was the end of November, but not sure if that's still um, the same timeline or not. You, you can get to it through training.globe.gov, the same way you used to get to it. I think we're going in order of our IOPs as far as um, visualization. Thank you for all attending tonight. It was great seeing all of you and talking with you tonight. Um, and have a wonderful night.